Hey, a friend, Chris Vandeviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today, day three of our 10.5 week, where we're exploring the brand new huge features that came with the most recent update. Today, we're going to examine the Quick Sampler, which is a welcome addition to the sampling toolkit in Logic. But not only do we have the Quick Sampler, we also have the Big Brother Sampler, which replaced the EXS. And we'll dig into that in another video. Now, sampling is not new to Logic. We've had the EXS for a long time but it was looking a little long in the tooth. And although it had some drag and drop functionality, it was just not very intuitive in a modern era where we're all used to just dragging and dropping and be able to interact with the graphical interface. So it's a huge update where we have a sampler where we can actually dig into the waveform and adjust the start and end time. And it's wonderful that we're able to do this now. Now the quick sampler allows us to work with one sample at a time. And there's a variety of ways for us to load up the quick sampler. We can drag and drop just about any style of region and audio files. And I'm going to take this base sample here and drag it into the track header. And we're gonna get some hotspot options for drag and drop. We can pick the quick sampler, drum machine designer, alchemy. And if I had multiple samples I was dragging in, it would open the bigger sampler. So let's start with a quick sampler on original. Now here's the brand new wonderful interface for the quick sampler. We have a big waveform view, which we can edit the start and end time. We can add a loop. We can adjust the playback. We have different options down here for playback, looping, following the tempo of the project. We also have a synth section here for pitch, adding a filter, adjusting pan and volume. We have envelopes for each of the synth sections, and we have two separate LFOs and a mod matrix. Now, of course, the first question is, is what's the difference between original and optimized when loading a sample into Quick Sampler? Well, let's just drag the same exact region into the plugin. And you can see original says use original tuning, loudness, looping, and length, whereas optimize is optimizing the tuning and loudness of the sample itself, searching for loop points and cropping the silence of the sample. So again, let's start with original. And we can see that this sample has been placed on a root key of C3. So if we just select our track here, use the musical typing. Cool, it's on C3, but the note that the bass played was not C3. And if this was important to us, then we may want this placed and optimized for the actual key that it played. So once again, drag this region in, set it to optimized. And we can now see that the root key has been set to G2. So in the case that we have a sample where we don't really care where it's placed along the keys, we just want it centrally located C3. We want to use the exact loudness of that sample and the exact length of the sample. In that case, we would use the original mode. But in the case that we do want the tuning to be optimized, we want loudness to be optimized, we want to search for any sort of loops and crop silence, then we would use optimized mode for loading the sample. Now beyond this, we have three different playback modes. We have classic, we have one shot and slice. Classic mode is perfect for samples that you want to stop playing the moment that you release a key. And we can also set up loop points. With one shots, these are best suited for drum samples and sound effects, the types of samples that you want to continue playing through even if you release the key. Slice mode is a great mode for being able to extract many transients from a single sample and placing them along the keys of a keyboard, such as a drum loop. We'll dig into that a little later. Now we have three different marker types within the graphical display here. We have a start marker here where we can adjust the exact starting point of the sample. So if I bring this down, hit play, we can also adjust the end of the sample. So let's bring it pretty close, check it out. We also have these fade markers, so we can fine tune the beginning and end of the sample. So let's bring this fade pretty far out, and I'll bring this quite a bit out. So we can kind of have a, like a ramping in and out effect. And we also can introduce a loop with loop markers as well. So let me just click outside of these tags here, and we can set the loop to forward. And we now have this looped section. You can see the two loop markers. So let's just move this loop section towards the center. Now you can hear that that loop is popping. So let's take a look at the snap section here, which allows us to snap these markers to either zero crossing, transient note, which is great for drums, or the beat. So I'm gonna set this to zero crossing and then zoom in using my Magic Mouse's scroll capability. And then I'm going to move this end of the loop and you can see that's snapping to the zero crossing. So let's now hear it. And we can also add a crossfade to the beginning and end of the loop. Loops can be played either forward or in reverse. 
or it can alternate, so it'll go back and forth in the loop section. And we can even have it play to the end on release. So, so once I release my finger from the key, it'll loop and then it'll go all the way to the end of the sample. We can also move entire sections within the graphical display. So you can see here, my mouse is hovering in the middle section here. We can move the entire loop section back and forth. We can adjust both the beginning and end markers of the entire sample, just back and forth, holding option and clicking and dragging. We can also adjust both fades holding option, clicking and dragging. And the crossfade marker adjusts for both at the beginning and end of the loop. We also have a whole series of settings. I'm not gonna dig into these because I think the graphical display is the easiest way to get started with the quick sampler, but there's a variety of options to check out here. And you can even right click many of the tags to open contextual menus that'll hold a lot of what you see here in the settings menu. So at a base level, the quick sampler is an easy way to just drag and drop samples into this thing and then be able to adjust exactly what you need to play up and down the keys. But we do have this whole synth section as well. I'm gonna keep it relatively brief, but we do have this pitch section, a filter section, and an amp section, which each has its own envelope for shaping modulation related to certain parameters. So let's adjust the pitch up by an octave. So we can bump it up with the coarse knob. We can adjust with the fine knob as well. We can even glide into a note. So check it out. I'm gonna bump it out pretty hard. And let me bring this out quite a bit and remove this fade. And if I switch between notes, you can hear the note bending into the different notes. We have a huge array of filters to choose from. Low pass filters, band pass, high pass. I'll set a high pass filter and we'll adjust the cutoff. So bring this down. We can also boost or cut the corner frequency right at the cutoff. We can drive the sample as well. And we have this option for envelope depth. So down here we have an envelope section and it allows us to adjust a variety of different parameters depending on which envelope options you need. We can adjust just the attack and decay or we can go as high as attack, hold, decay, sustain, and release. We'll stick with attack and decay just to keep it simple. So if I bump out the attack here, and then boost the envelope depth, check it out. Bump out the decay. You can see this white dot springing forward and then down. This is the easiest way to imagine what modulation does. The envelope depth is modulating the cutoff frequency. So it's going past the frequency we set along the attack and then dropping back down along the decay. The decay is pretty long, so let's play it again. We can also use this key scale to widen up our envelope depth. Check it out. And for both pitch and amp, you can do the exact same thing. So let's adjust the envelope depth. And this is gonna adjust for the coarse knob here and bump it up a little bit. Bring this out. Check out. Same thing with the amp as well. So let's bring this out. So we're adjusting the attack of the sample as a whole. Now with the LFO section, we can actually target specific parameters of the quick sampler to be modulated. And these modulation waveforms are right down here. So we can use a sine wave, triangle, saw, square. We'll stick with sine to keep it smooth. And I'm gonna pick a target of the loop end. So check it out. If I bump this out quite a bit, and we'll sync the rate to the project tempo and we'll bump it up pretty fast. So it'll be like a 16th note. Here we go. You can see that the end of the sample is being modulated. So let's bring all of this out. Let's bring this out and we'll slow it down. So a quarter note, so you can see that. So the end is modulating back and forth. And depending on where our sample is in its trajectory, by the time it meets the changing end, it stops the sample. And there's a variety of other ways to adjust the modulation as well within LFO2 and the Mon Matrix. There's quite a bit of options for sculpting and shaping your samples within the quick sampler. But to keep things relatively focused, let's dig into the slice mode of the sampler. 
From here, I'm going to drag in an Apple loop. So I'm going to drag in a drum beat from the Apple loops here. I'm going to drag it into the original tab here. So we have our drum loop. And if I click on the slice mode, we now see a variety of slice markers for each transient of this drum groove. So it's super cool. We now have each of these different drum transients spread out across the keyboard. And the start key is C1. So if we bring in our musical typing, bump it down. And let's just reset all of the synth parameters here by going to the gear, initialize synth parameters. So now we're gonna have exactly the sound that we wanna work with. We have each of these different slice markers and you can see the note on which each of these drum transients are placed on. So you can play each of the samples just by clicking on the little play button. We can also choose how we want these transients laid out across the keys. Do we want it chromatic where it just goes up all the white in the black keys? Do we want this only on the white keys? Do we want it only on the black keys? Which is super helpful for someone like me who basically, you know, I'm just tapping with two fingers the best I can with a keyboard. We also have different modes for slicing. We can either choose transient, so it's analyzed and placed a marker on each transient. We can set it to beat divisions. So now it's set to an eighth note division, but we can make it as coarse or fine as we want. We can also set this to equal divisions. But transient would be the best tool for something like a drum loop. And we can also adjust the sensitivity. So maybe you have a drum loop that has a lot of sort of ambient noise, background information that you don't want to be picked up as a transient. So you can adjust the sensitivity slider. But perhaps I don't want a marker here and I want to play this kick and the next element as one note. So we can actually remove this marker just by double clicking on it. And we can actually play these two notes together just by clicking on the play button or our keyboard. We can add transient markers just by zooming in here and then just clicking in the display. We can move the transient marker and just make sure to snap it to either zero crossing or maybe transient note would be really helpful. So we drag it right there. Beautiful. And let's actually remove this marker and let's check out gate mode. Now, sometimes we want a sample to stop as soon as we let go of the key and gate mode will ensure this. So if I hold C sharp, we'll hear the whole sample. If I just tap it, it gates the sample. So it stops it as soon as you release your finger from the key. Or we can have the sample play all the way to the end, regardless of what we played. So let's turn off gate, check it out. So now it's played the entire sample, regardless of how long I held the key down. One of the best parts of the new quick sampler is that we can actually take the sample that's been analyzed. And if you hover your mouse right in the bottom section here, we have this bar that comes up. If I drag and drop this onto a software instrument track, we now have the MIDI information placed in a MIDI region. You can see it right there, and it's pretty awesome. We can play right through. And obviously it's playing through because we have play to end. If I set this to follow the tempo, Let's remove this region. Drag it back in. Beautiful. So let's mute this bass note. Now, lastly, we can also record right into the sampler. And this is really cool. We can add vocal ad libs and take things to a crazy place. We can set this to recorder. And then you just want to set the input, which can be either an input, audio, or a bus. I'm gonna set this to my input two, and I'm gonna actually play guitar into this recorder. Now just keep in mind, you can either set the record start to start immediately, so the moment you hit record, the sampler is recording, or you can wait for the signal to pass a threshold, and the threshold can be assigned, so the moment that the level meter exceeds the threshold, the sampler starts recording. And you can also monitor your input as well if you need to. Let's give it a try. So let's set this to start immediately and check it out. Very cool. Let's turn off the loop section and let's just check it out. What do we got here? We have it on A2. The root note has obviously been analyzed because I played an A chord and we can just get crazy with this thing. But once again, we can have it follow the tempo. Start adding a loop. Let's bring it down here. 
have it reverse, and we can even play a little faster. Now the last piece of the puzzle here is how samples are saved within the Quick Sampler. Every time you hit save and you've had a sample loaded into the sampler. Now the last piece of the puzzle here with a Quick Sampler is how samples are handled. Right now we only have this audio recording, my sample. But if I drag the bass in here and it examines real quick, we now have a queue of all the different samples we've dragged and dropped into the Quick Sampler. While we only work with one sample at a time, the Quick Sampler keeps a running tally of all the samples that we've loaded into it so we can swap between. And samples are saved to your project in a samples folder. So if we take a look at my finder here, we have samples, Quick Sampler, and we can see all the samples that I've been loading and dragging and dropping. And every time I've loaded this base sample into the Quick Sampler, it's saved a new version. Now let's say that I have my base loop here and I wanna adjust for this and let's go to the gear and let's crop this sample. So let's make sure that our finder is in view here so we can check out what's going on. And I'll go here, crop sample. We've now created a new base sample for this crop version. So it hasn't overwritten the existing samples that we've had in the samples folder. It's created a new one and it's tagged that sample. So you always have this running tally of samples that are being saved to the projects. But you can also save a sample to the quick sampler itself just using the save as. Now I recommend saving new folders within the quick sampler folder. This will help you keep everything organized. So we'll call this base. So we have a base sample folder now and we'll call this Chris base sample. And now it's been saved. And we have this folder here within the dropdown to keep things organized. So you can start building a library of samples very easily. Now that was a lot of information, but at its core, the quick sampler allows us to just easily drag and drop Apple loops, audio files, MIDI regions, patterns, what have you, and start manipulating that sample. There's just so much here to dig into. I highly recommend checking out the quick sampler. I do hope that this week of 10.5 has been helpful for you so far. If it has, as always, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and new posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.